Welcome good people, my name is Joel Collier and today we're going to talk about uh, the differences between Andrew Hayes' process macro and structural equation modeling. And we're going to talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages of uh, each of those programs and really kind of which one's more appropriate to use in certain situations. So with process and sim, it seems like there's this uh, argument or this tug of war, if you will, that if you're one, you, you're not the other. Uh, where some people will make the argument that, you know, I'm, I use process for everything regardless of whatever it is. And then some people on the opposite side of structural equation modeling say, well, I'll just use sim for everything. I don't even use process. And ultimately, what happens is, is you have people starting to use process when it's really kind of inappropriate to use it and you have sim people using sim too at times when you're like man you really should have used process for, the, uh, for this uh, and so this video is really just going to try to uh, give you an understanding of like when's really a better time to use process when's a better time to use sim and what's some of the advantages and disadvantages of each each of those so we don't get in this mindset of like, well, if I got a hammer in my hand, everything's a nail. You know, well, I know process, so I'm going to use process for everything. Or I know sim, and I'm just going to use sim for everything, even though sometimes it, it really is, you know, inappropriate to use it. So to talk about uh, some of the advantages and disadvantages uh, of that, I want to talk about Andrew Hayes' uh, process macro. So first, uh, I use both the process and uh, sim statistical um, software. I think both are great. This is not a, a, a video trying to trash one in, in, in response to the other. I think both have advantages and disadvantages uh, for their respective uh, kind of analysis. And so really I'm going to go over kind of each and one of the things that I think really uh, the process macro does really great. Some things it's not so much. And then the kind of the flip with, uh, with sim. So one of the things, too, that's uh, really advantageous uh, for Andrew Hayes' process macro is there's really no extra software you have to buy. He gives you kind of a free download, uh, and usually it is a macro that you can uh, download into SPSS or SAS, uh, even R, and it just kind of embeds right on in. So for those that are not familiar with where it's at and how to uh, to get it, if you go up into the analyze uh, subheading and go down to um, into the regression uh, subheading, you'll see kind of a, a um, another little link out there that'll just say process. And when you click that, it'll have kind of a pop-up menu uh, where you can kind of put in these kind of preset models. So again. It, it's just the aspect of I don't have to pay anything uh, for this and that's nice you know the other thing too that's uh, one of the advantages of uh, the, the process macro is really the use of what I call kind of preset models so Andrew Hayes has a lot of these kind of already kind of uh, models uh, or uh, potential models already kind of mapped out and it's kind of embedded into the software so if you're trying to test one of these kind of type of models um, you don't have to actually do the the formation of the model it's just kind of a plug and play of tell me what's the IV the DV or the moderator and it kind of runs for you here's an example of what some of these uh, models look like you'll see like model 7 uh, has what we call kind of a, a moderated mediation model where it has those listed out there if you're looking for something kind of specific uh, it's got these kind of preset models. Um, this is more kind of a serial mediation model, model six. Uh, one of the more common ones is model four, which is just a simple mediation model uh, out here. And then model one, two is just a simple uh, moderation uh, model. But you can see as well, it'll give you kind of the statistical aspects of what's going on. So this is an interaction. So you see the IV and the, uh, the moderator and the interaction term. Uh, and its regression weights go into the DV. So it's got these kind of preset models um, that it is kind of embedded into the uh, the macro. So if we flip back over to uh, the actual process, you'll see in here it says model numbers, and there's like almost near 100 uh, different potential models that you already have uh, embedded into the macro that you don't have to form. And, and it's just kind of a nice uh, preset way to uh, make models quicker and faster without having to uh, 
uh, to do it yourself. The uh, next one uh, that I find uh, next um, advantage is really this idea that what with Andrew Hayes's process macro, he really handles multi-categorical, uh, what I call dummy coding, um, in a very seamless manner. Where in other ones, especially with Sim, it's kind of laborious on the the front end for you to do that. Uh, with Hayes's process macro, it's pretty much just kind of clicking buttons, and it does all this kind of dummy coding for you. Uh, so if you had a multi-categorical variable, um, it, you know, you'll basically just kind of a, you know denote that and saying like, hey, it's got more than two categories out there, and then Hayes's macro will kind of behind the scenes just go ahead and kind of do this dummy coding, uh, which is really nice. One of the other things too that it does uh, that's really um, seamless and uh, and does really better than uh, than sim is the idea of probing interactions with moderation testing and even these kind of Johnson Newman uh, points or finding the exact spot uh, where you know uh, moderation becomes significant. Uh, you've got kind of spotlight analysis that it does really easily, uh, and it also does kind of a floodlight analysis through these John Johnson Newman points. And it's just, uh, you know, substantially um, quicker and easier through process than it is doing this through SIM. Looking at it from the um, the uh, process um, uh, pop-up window here, you can see that when you go into the options down here, it will say, hey, do you want to, uh, for the conditional values, do you want to probe it? One standard deviation below, one standard deviation above. Uh, we'll also let you go at the 16th, 50th, and 84th percentiles. If you want to uh, see the Johnson Neiman uh, output, it gives it to you, and it just basically uh, does this in behind the scenes, which is great. If you're going to do this in sim, what happens is, is you have to almost um, uh, do all of this in SPSS kind of ahead of time of finding out what is the standard deviation above and then kind of mean center it and uh, what's the standard deviation below and then you're creating kind of these new columns in SPSS to pull over in sim uh, and it, it's just more work uh, and so from a, a standpoint of assessing and probing interactions and even assessing Johnson Neiman points process does it much easier uh, than that in sim does the other um, advantage that uh, process has over sim is it can run the analysis with relatively small samples so with sim you're talking about I may need 200 you know a sample of at least 200 to say I've got like stable parameter estimates well you don't have to have near that many uh, with process so you can run an analysis with 60 70 uh, and still have sufficient power uh, depending on what your model is uh, and you know you've got stable parameter estimates and everything kind of works and you don't have to have quite that big of a sample and so that's the reason why sometimes I'll see these very kind of simple models that they'll run in sim and they've got like a sample of like 350 and I was like you could have done this in process with 75 and that's you know it's going to give you practically the same results without having to do uh, that much more data collection um, and so process really is kind of advantageous when it comes to running um, analysis with kind of small samples now saying that just because you get a small sample you know doesn't mean well I can ignore how much power I need to find the effect you know so uh, but that is an option now some of the downsides that you'll see with Andrew Hayes's process macro is uh, it only allows only one DV in model testing. Now this is really problematic. Uh, so uh, the ultimate models and these preset models that it gives you, uh, and you can kind of even kind of create your own models, but the constrict the restriction on this is, is it only allows one DV in model testing, the ultimate DV at the end. And you can see in these preset models here, like our y values or our dependent variables, there's only one in all of these models. It doesn't let you have multiple dependent variables. And you know, for a lot of analysis, 
you know, you're not going to just simply have one DV. Sometimes, especially you're talking about, is really has an effect on multiple things, not just one. But with process, you really can only have one DV, which is a pretty big drawback. The second disadvantage you're going to see with uh, Hayes' proce process macro is, is that it uses composite variables. Um, and so what it does is it takes, um, let's say you had a construct that you measured with five indicators. Uh, let's say it was a, adaptive behavior, how adaptive were uh, people in a restaurant setting. And you measure it with five different indicators or questions, if you will. Uh, and what uh, Hayes' process macro requires is that you use kind of composite variables. And it's the equivalent of kind of what they call path modeling, too. Well, what happens is, is you take this construct and all these five different indicators and you basically take an average uh, of all of those and kind of make one score. But what happens now is, is now you're ignoring measurement error which is really advantageous to understanding the validity of your construct and how you captured it and you're kind of ignoring that altogether um, and you're just basically now using kind of path modeling and sim for the most part is a little bit stronger uh, when it comes to uh, that specifically because it can account for measurement error it also accounts for uh, model fit too which really the process macro just kind of ignores it just assumes like well model fits really not an issue the other thing too that really is uh, uh, a disadvantage with uh, process is you can only uh, have one IV in moderation testing so it, with all these different models and the ultimate kind of starting IV or independent variable you know let's say you had uh, multiple independent variables to a dependent variable that was getting moderated well with moderation testing and, and process you can really only have one independent variable that's being moderated at a time um, and so you're pretty constrained you know in that perspective another one is is there's no reciprocal causation model testing in uh, process which means if you've got a reciprocal relationship where a causes b but b can also cause a too um, and it's got this kind of re reciprocal relationship you can't test this in process it just basically blows up where you can test that in structural equation modeling and so it doesn't really have kind of those same kind of constraints uh, and lastly, the other thing, too, when you're talking about disadvantages with uh, process is, is how it handles missing data. Uh, so if it has missing data, it just simply simply deletes it. Uh, so it doesn't try to have any kind of imputation or anything specifically that will try to address that or FIML or anything that will kind of uh, account for this missing data. It basically says if there's one, you know, one uh, value missing in that entire um row that's being used I just delete the whole row and that's throwing away a lot of data by doing that so with structural equation modeling let's talk a little bit about some of the advantages towards it so as I said uh, with some of the downsides of process with it using composite variables one of the nice things that structural equation modeling does is it assesses those measurement properties of constructs through its measurement error uh, it also assesses model fit uh, in regards to the observed covariance matrix versus your kind of estimated model covariance matrix and so you get a better understanding if from a validity standpoint of your constructs uh, the other thing is is there's really no limit in kind of model building where you can only have one DV with process and there's only one IV if you're moderation testing like you don't have any of those constraints so pretty much if you can think it up you can test it and sim uh, as long as the dependent variables aren't categorical you know the dependent variables have to be c continuous but regards to how many DVs you have or independents or moderators it pretty much is unlimited so you're pretty uh, unconstrained when you guard regards to model building the other one is it's better at capturing kind of the collective effect than individual relationships. So this is kind of addressing one of the things that I've seen people do with process. So they have, they've got multiple DVs, but then they'll test them kind of piecemeal, kind of one at a time, uh, instead of um, testing them as for the kind of collective effect at the end. 
So here's an example of uh, what I mean. So let's say we've got kind of a complex model here. Uh, we've got adaptive behavior, which is from a re this came from a restaurant setting saying that did the server adapt their behavior and did that lead to satisfaction uh, or did it lead to customer delight? And did those constructs lead to positive word of mouth or even tolerance to kind of future failures, which means if they had a failure in the future, they were less, you know, they were more tolerant of it because they had had such kind of a good experience in this present time. Well, if um, you ran this in process, well, you couldn't run this model because there's two DVs on the back end. And so sometimes you'll see people that will literally, uh, they'll say, well, what we'll do is we'll just delete one of them you know, and we'll run it with uh, uh, positive word of mouth, and then we'll come back, and then we'll run it again, except that instead of the 1DV being word of mouth, it'll be uh, tolerance to failure. Uh, and that's a little problematic, uh, because you don't really understand the collective effect that's going to your ultimate DVs. You're kind of piecemealing the analysis. So just to give you some context, so... This is what happens with the original model that I just showed you where there was two DVs at the end and one of those relationships was uh, customer delight having a relationship to word of mouth. So this is in the original model where uh, there's also word of mouth but also there's that second DV of tolerance uh, to future failures. And you'll see that the uh, estimate is 0.713 out there but if I piecemeal it and I only look at just word of mouth and I delete tolerance to failure you see my customer delight to word of mouth the values change out there I'm not getting the same values well why was well, because again I'm kind of piecemealing the analysis on the back end by looking at them one at a time instead of looking at the collective effect of the DVs um, and so yes you can you can look at them individually, but it's not really necessarily appropriate to look at them individually if you're trying to understand the collective effect. Um, and, and so SIM really kind of handles this better than process does, especially when you're talking about multiple kind of DVs. The other thing that you're going to see um, with structural equation modeling that's really kind of advantage is they have uh, modification indices, which is if your model in uh, process you run it and it just really is kind of like nothing's coming out significant it's just kind of bad you know and if you do this in structural equation modeling you have these modification indices which kind of let you have a better understanding from the data are there other paths that are significant or really going to increase kind of the, the model fit and be really more appropriate than what you're really hypothesizing and so it kind of gives you some more information to see like, hey, you hypothesized this relationship over here, but actually, you know, it's going in reverse. Um, but you're not going to get any of that from, from uh, the process macro. The process macro basically says here's the predetermined model. You inputted all the data. It didn't work. The end. Um, where, again, with structural equation modeling, you get a little bit more information in the model building and to kind of alter and change some of that. Now, structural equation modeling has its own issues, too. Uh, it is not uh, disadvantage-free, either. So, with structural equation modeling, usually you're talking about having to buy an extra software pro uh, package that goes with that. With SPSS, it's Amos, and there's got M+, and there's, you know, quite a few others, and oftentimes they're kind of expensive, too. So that's kind of a downside, you know, especially when the other's free. Uh, with structural equation modeling, you're going to have a relatively large sample size required, and that's, you know, uh, unfortunate, especially when you've got, you know, really kind of hard to get sample, too, that you're going to have to get a pretty large sample to have kind of stable parameter estimates. The other thing, too, with SIM is there's oftentimes a lot of data prep before, especially if you're talking about with moderation or dummy coding, and process does all that for you, but with SIM, you have to do that yourself in kind of your uh, data prep software through SPSS or something else. And then lastly, with um, the uh, structure equation modeling, 
you know, building models, it's time consuming, right? There's no preset models with uh, Amos and some of these other ones. You have to build all of them, which means you have to construct all the IVs and the mediators and the, the moderators and the interactions and all of those things. And you have to kind of make, you know, that be conceptualized in the structural equation modeling uh, program instead of just saying, hey, I want model four, and then telling them what's the IV, the DV, and the moderator. So it is more time consuming than um, just uh, using kind of the macro function. So ultimately, um, I think there's advantages and disadvantages to each one of those. Uh, and both really are um, handy uh, in regards to doing certain things better than the other. Uh, but I just wanted to kind of give you an idea if you're looking for more information on maybe should I use process, should I use sim, and I hope this kind of helps uh, kind of moving forward. Uh, so if you um, are looking for more information on specifically structural equation modeling, uh, I'm usually um, are trying to kind of provide this information through the channel, but also if you're looking for something uh, that you can take kind of offline, I encourage you to check out my book, Applied Structural Equation Modeling Using Amos. Uh, I wrote it more in kind of a step-by-step -step, uh, perspective of researcher to understand and how to analyze their, uh, their analysis and from very basic to even kind of complex. Uh, and so if you saw a value in the, this video, I'd ask that you would uh, like and subscribe because uh, it really does kind of help me out. Uh, and I hope you all have a, a good week. Great people.